In this video, I'll talk about the supplies that are needed in the construction of the Beacon Hill dollhouse. And this can apply to any construction for a dollhouse in general. So as you can imagine, it can get very messy in the area that you're doing the construction. So you have to be mindful of the area that you're going to be working on. So that work area has to be some place that you can leave the setup there for an extended period of time. And in my case, it took a, you know, it took several months of of work. And so I had to leave everything kind of in that area for that entire duration. And so that's not only just the house that's being constructed, constructed, but it's all the kind of extra equipment that you're using, the supplies that you're using uh, for that period of time. So it can be a little bit inconvenient, so you just have to be mindful of that. The work area, I did use the kitchen table. So to protect it, I did first place a tarp. And then I had an unfolded cardboard box that I laid on top of that. So that way, if, if that one, you know, kind of got too bad, I could actually remove it over time. And depending on what I was working on, if I was painting, staining, or something like that, I did also lay down a plastic drop cloth. And then as that got too bad, I could toss that and replace it with a new one. They're, they're fairly inexpensive. The next thing I'm going to talk about is clamps and tapes. One of the most versatile pieces of equipment that you can use in the construction of your house is masking tape. This can be used for binding areas within the construction that you just cannot fit many of the other clamps that are available uh, for the construction. So highly recommend getting masking tape and lots of it. It can be purchased very inexpensively. The other thing that I use quite a bit were these quick grip vice grips. So these are the ones over to the left with the the yellow pads on the ends. This is very helpful in holding something together very firmly uh, while the glue is drying. There are some areas that are just going to be difficult to work with and this forces them in a nice square position while the glue is drying. The other thing that I found very useful were these were these clamps with the red strapping. These allowed me to wrap around the entire frame of the house, you know, as this, this thing is coming together. The other clamps that are quite useful are these black hand gripped clamps. Those are really good for slightly larger areas where you need to get a nice firm grip while the glue is drying. I also picked up these plastic clothespins, you know, and I use these quite a bit as well for clamping little pieces together while they're drying. Use them all over the place. Sometimes it's, you know, it's preferable over tape because that way you don't have to take the tape off. So quite useful there. In addition, you know, have a, you know, used a variety of different tapes blue tape, double-sided tape, duct tape, you know, some electrical wire and some poster tack. Sometimes all of those became very useful d depending on the circumstance. Okay, the next thing I'll talk about are paints. So certainly how you decide to finish the dollhouse is going to be a matter of personal preference, but I'll discuss a little bit about some of the things that I chose during the finishing process uh, for for my house. Uh, one of the things that you'll find in the material that's used in the construction of this is that the wood, it's a plywood, and it's very porous. So priming the wood is actually fairly important before you put the final paint on the surface of the of the wood. So when I looked around at some of the old paints that I had available to me. I did find nearly a gallon of this interior flat yellow and I thought okay well that's neutral enough that I can probably use that for for priming the surfaces and I make good use of like an old paint instead of throwing it out. So I used that um, to paint 
the services before I did anything and, and it was even before I'd even made any decisions on what kind of color to use for the most part on the interior especially so everything on the interior initially looked just yellow until I started making some decisions on paint color but even on the exterior you know all the I did prime all the surface with the yellow as well so actually even before I put together a piece I go ahead and paint that surface you know let it dry so I had decided also initially that I was going to go with a white trim so after priming it and letting that dry then I would use uh, for the trim I would use like a semi gloss white and that kind of gave it like a nice glean you know uh, for the trim uh, and I went through a fair amount of that so I did initially have like a like a quart of and you know nearly a quart of that I went through all of that and had to go ahead and purchase some more I did for you know some of the white the white uh, surfaces such as the such as the columns in the front I decided to use spray paint for that so I bought quite a bit of spray paint that I use for painting some of those kind of detailed materials and I used it on the interior as well for painting some of the the surfaces of, of the the paneling that I ended up using because I wanted that kind of finer finish but a lot of times I would paint the the other white surfaces just with foam brushes so I just kept a lot of foam brushes and um, for for painting of most of the surfaces once I did make some decisions on the paint colors that I wanted for the exterior and the interior I decided to use paint samples instead of buying larger amounts of paint so this allowed me to purchase the paint colors that I was interested in fairly inexpensively so I think each one of those samples is about three dollars and they go quite a long ways I was able to paint the entire exterior with one of those uh, paint samples and still had plenty left over same thing on the interior you know I was able to use that paint and paint all the interior color uh, using that and still with lots of lots of it left over the other thing I did is made a decision to stain the areas that I wanted to appear as though it was like a wood surface like the flooring so I used like a, a red mahogany stain and then I put like a polyurethane on it and a lot of times I would do like multiple coats like a lot of them were like two maybe three coats and then just do a light sanding in between each one and it kind of gives you a nicer finish once it's done and so that's kind of a nice tip and then of course like clean up with a lot of these type of things I use like a mineral spirit and then I also had like maybe a couple of smaller brushes uh, that I could use for some of the finer work and just some other art paint supplies that I could use for painting a few other surfaces like I had a some black that I wanted uh, for the shutters had like a little bit of the chimney so I use like this kind of red brick color for that you know a spray paint gun you know and that that covers pretty much what you need for the paint supplies the next area is glues and fillers so for the majority of the body of the house I ended up using like a wood glue to adhere the pieces together this creates a nice secure bond uh, for wood so as I think it, it tends to like seep into the pores of the wood and create a nice bond between the the two pieces of the wood so I use that a lot uh, throughout the entire construction you know went through more than one bottle of that so you know be prepared that if you if you buy it you may need to buy more later a lot of a lot of gluing I used a lot of the uh, this other one called a tacky glue I like this one because I could use it to adhere a lot of the the detail pieces that are painted and exposed and it dries clear as opposed to the wood glue which leaves like a residue and, and 
And a lot of times when I did use that, I had to then touch up the paint afterwards. Uh, a lot of the surfaces that I didn't care too much about, but just needed to get it can you know um, glued together. I could use like a standard Elmer's glue, like a white glue, and that also dries clear, which was nice. I used uh, like a glue stick for the shingles. I used it for adhering the wallpaper. I used the super glue in many little spots, which just didn't, you know, the glue just didn't want to hold very well. So if I had a problem area, I always reverted back to the super glue, and that usually did the trick to bond it together. The Mod Podge, which is more like a finishing, but it is it is like a glue material, I used to treat the the wallpapers that I used on the interior. So before putting them up, I coated them with the Mod Podge. It seals it. It keeps it you know more color fast from you know uh, it keeps it from from fading, and I think it also probably helps just to protect the surface from scratches and, and just general discoloration. Um, the gallery glass material, you can call that it maybe more of a paint than it is a a glue, but it 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 looks kind of like a glue, and it in this case it dried clear, and so this I used for the glass to make it look like a beveled glass, and that kind of gave a nice you know little detail there. The spray adhesive I used in areas you know where I just needed wider coverage of adherence of some sort of surface material. So for instance I used that when applying like the brick texture along the the foundation of the house. So I had like a a plastic um, you know brick you know surface um, material and to get that to adhere you know the spray adhesive did a fairly good job still not great I think I still need to figure out something else that's probably a little bit better. And then fillers was was I used quite a bit too. So wood fillers, you'll find out that there are, are many areas of the wood that are brittle, you know, and just don't look very good. You know, a lot of these are, you know, you need to show the detail. So a lot of times you're you're exposing the edges of the wood, and it just it just looks really bad. So. I needed to fill that in, you know, smooth it out, sand it down. That came in handy. Also, you'll find out there's a lot of gaps in in the the seams of the of the pieces. So the I just used like a standard all-purpose caulking, filled that in, you know, and it really makes a big difference in the overall appearance. One of the steps that you're going to have to do to prepare a piece for painting and assembly is sanding. So you might as well make the best of it. So one of the things that I found to be extremely helpful were these sanding sponges. So I got these usually at the dollar store and I used these a lot throughout the the preparation phase in assembly for the dollhouse. So I could sand down the edges you know, to create a nice smooth finish before doing any any further preparation. The other thing were these sanding blocks. So I could cut down the strips of sandpaper, uh, you know, put them on these little sanding blocks, and it gives you a nice flat edge to smooth down, uh, you know, an edge. You know, sometimes you need to actually use it for filing of a piece a little bit. And typically I put the heavier grit on the sanding block and then I use the sponge for the finer sanding. The next thing to discuss are some of the additional tools that you'll be using in the construction of the dollhouse. I would say of the ones shown in this image the most important one is the X-Acto knife. I used that you know a lot as I was cutting out each of the pieces from the the sheets of wood that are part of the kit so that one extremely important. Uh, I also used the mallet there, believe it or not, to kind of pound some of the pieces in place. You'll find it's just it's a little bit of a struggle at times to kind of get things together, you know, evenly. So you have to do a little encouraging there with the mallet. 
sometimes I was impatient and I would use the blow dryer for blowing dry the the paint because I didn't I didn't want to wait as long as needed sometimes so you'll end up picking up a lot of miscellaneous equipment I used a Dremel I used a miter saw when I started to put in some of the details for the crown molding on the interior scissors you know a pencil very very useful some miscellaneous electrical tweezers that type of stuff I also kept a dustpan and brush handy all the time so this way after cutting pieces sanding them there's a lot of debris I could sweep that up it just makes things feel more tidy and organized as you go through the process also the drop cloths are you know kept several of those handy so if they got too dirty too too much paint on them I could dispose of those put a new one down and it also helped to make things more tidy I also used a soft measuring tape and this was good for marking out the location of the siding on the exterior measuring some of the interior uh, elements so that way I could uh, decide how long to make baseboard molding crown molding also I purchased the circuit uh, basic wiring kit these are some of the components of that uh, electrical wire stripping um, also purchased some additional hinges and door knobs miscellaneous things that you're going to need on the interior of the house also depending on how you decide to finish your house just be on the lookout for objects everyday objects that you might be able to use to incorporate into the house so for instance for I found like these barbecue skewers and I could use those as additional trim for the baseboard molding I use coffee stirs as the the molding trim in the panels and I used the plastic binders cut it into strips and line the interior of the curved windows to smooth out the surface of the interior thanks for watching